Hi, I'm Connor Long. I'm a senior student at the UC Davis School of Veterinary Medicine, and this is my entry into the 2020 Animal Enrichment Contest at UC Davis. And my entry is for my ball python, the snake. Uh, his name is the snake because I got him when I was seven years old, and he was one, I was seven, and so I've had him for the last 22 years, and I was not very clever when I was seven, so I just named him the snake. So he's been with me all this time, and for most of his life I've kept him in a kind of boring uh, enclosure that wasn't very large. It met husbandry guidelines, recommended husbandry guidelines according to um, like the Ball Python Manual and Reptiles Magazine, the sources that people tend to go to for reptile husbandry advice. But it wasn't very large, it wasn't very interesting, and recently I was thinking about upgrading him because I think he deserves a better enclosure after being kind of a boring enclosure for most of his life. So I built this enclosure based off of some guidelines that I found online uh, from, I believe it's the American Association of Zookeepers, or Guidelines Recommendations for Reptile Enrichment. I will put a link to it uh, either as like a banner up here or maybe down in the description below. We'll, we'll figure it out. And they were talking about having you know, different substrates for the snake to feel as he moves around. Um, a climbing branch so that they can really climb up higher in their enclosure as well, having multiple hides. So I have two hides. Uh, one is the warm hide, one is the cooler hide, and he's got a pond in the back. And I also have all these live plants, and they grow in, and then I have to trim them back, and this creates an ever-changing landscape with different places for him to hide. And I, you know, built this integrated backdrop. I have LED light panels in there and LEDs in the in the front too so they don't heat up he can't like burn himself on them or anything but he's got a true day and night cycle and I put him in after I built up this cage and he took to it immediately he uses all the space mostly at night so I wonder if part of the reason that people think you can keep these guys in pretty small enclosures is they don't see them moving around that much because they're nocturnal but at night, yeah, he'll come out, he'll climb up the branch, he'll, he'll move from his different hides, he'll go in the water, he'll trample some plants, and I have to cut those out and they regrow. And he, he really uses the whole space, particularly when he's getting hungry again. And I also saw online that uh, there were some anecdotal reports of people building more enriched naturalistic enclosures for their snakes and having them show a more robust feeding response afterwards. And the snake has always been a bit of a picky eater I've never been able to feed him pre-killed prey items. He's always insisted on eating live prey items. When I got him back in 1997, you could not find pre-killed prey items in my area. You can get those at any pet store now, including the chains, but you could not get them back then. So I raised him on live mice and switched into live rats and he got a bit bigger. And when I was able to get the frozen ones, I could not get him to eat them. And I tried all the tricks. I called stores. I There are different methods you can use that I won't get into right now, but I, I tried all that and he just would not accept them. And if it if it would uh, be more likely to accept a pre-killed prey item in a more enriched environment, like I, I, I thought, you know, why not try? Pre-killed prey are better for, for snakes. They're uh, cheaper and easier to store, which is good for you. Uh, it's more humane for the prey item, and, uh, you know, rodents can actually do quite a bit of damage to a snake if the snake does not, like, kill them and eat them immediately. Um, they can cause nasty bite wounds. They can, in some cases, actually kill your pet, so it's really best to not be feeding your snake live prey if you can get away from it. You know, I built this up for all the, the specs that we just discussed, and I put him in, and within two weeks, he ate his first pre-killed prey item ever. 23 years and so I've been feeding him pre-killed rodents um, for the last seven months and he hasn't missed a feeding so you know I wish I'd done this 10 15 years ago but I, I didn't know enriched environments I think they're better for reptiles uh, it's always hard to know what animals are thinking particularly reptiles because they're just so different than us and there's not a ton of research into them that is peer-reviewed but you know, to, to the best of my assessment, as, as somebody who has been keeping this animal for most of my life, uh, I think that he seems happier, to the extent the snake can be happier. He's certainly 
more active, uh, he is feeding more readily. I consider those to be uh, metrics of um, at least the ability to express natural behavior, which is something that we would be trying to uh, allow animals in our in our care to do. So yeah, I, I think that this is a good enclosure. I would recommend to other people who keep reptiles and snakes to consider switching to bioactive and to consider really doing your homework and trying to keep your animals in the largest enclosure that you can reasonably accommodate. So thanks uh, for your time. I hope you enjoyed watching this and uh, say goodbye, snake. Say goodbye. I and mean, you can't, but you can flick your tongue or something.